Um, my name is Joshua, as you have heard, Joshua Macau. I work for the social development uh, department based in Lamu. It's one of the most uh, interesting places where we neighbor Somalia. So when I had someone in, in Somalia, I was imagining it should be my neighbor. So uh, other than that, um, um, I'm also a student. Uh, undertaking uh, community development and uh, cooperatives, I, I, and I, I, in a, in a, in a bid to see how we can use cooperatives to foster community development. Uh, as a second bachelor, you know, it's funny doing a second bachelor. I decided after my first master's, I go for a second bachelor in cooperatives and community development. So that's why I have a passion for community development. I usually tell people um, I'm a community development practitioner by choice because my first undergraduate was in, in information technology. So I chose to do community development other than uh, pursuing the other field. So I, it's a pleasure being in the community development section and uh, having all those other sectors which I usually try to bring into play. My areas of interest are project management, monitoring and evaluation, stakeholder management, and uh, Actually, my research was on stakeholder management. If on request, I can share the report. Maybe part of the, my presentation has been formed by that uh, master's research. So I would like to take you through my presentation. I'm not sure about the screen sharing um, for Zoom, share screen, share screen, that one. Let me see if you can see my screen. Can you see my screen? Yes. Yes, yes, yes we can. Yeah, that's my yeah. OK, that's my presentation. Go to presentation I... mode. Yes? Go to presentation mode. Um, you are viewing screen, uh, slide, uh, slide show. Just click from the beginning. From the beginning, yes. Yeah. So that's what I want to talk about today, participatory evaluation of community development projects. And as I've said, it's formed by my master's research, which was uh, the role of stakeholder management in community development uh, projects, monitoring and evaluation in, in Lamu. I based it in Lamu, which is part of Kenya. So that is the topic I would like us to do today. Let's go to straight to introductions. Uh, in the introductions, I wanted to talk about community development and um, why we need to monitor community development projects or why we need to evaluate community development projects. And so the, my, my first slide talks about introductions where I introduce community development as a method or strategy or an approach that is supposed or that is envisioned to bring about a change through initiation of projects that are responsive to community needs. In your community, wherever you are, there are some specific community needs, be it in um, water and sanitation, in health, in education, conflict resolutions, especially for us, we usually find that you have a community of herders and community of um, uh, who are these herders and the other ones? Those, those who those who grow farmers. Oh no, a, a herder is a farmer as well. So the cultivators, eh, the crop crop farmers. So you usually find there are conflicts. So if you attempt to resolve that conflict, it's, it's a it, it becomes a community development project. So I'm saying these projects can be initiated by government, NGOs civil society organizations, community-based organizations, or self-help groups, where we have uh, different people of uh, a, a particular social economic status coming up into, to form a self-help group, and then they want to, to use that maybe to buy a, a tank for water conservation. They want to build a dam for preservation of water. That is, that is what self-help groups do. Uh, so, on, uh, that is the definition of community development. Then this other animal we are calling a project is uh, defined there. 
I'm defining it as a temporary endeavor and undertaken to achieve a desired goal. You only take a project to complete a particular goal or a particular objective. Uh, that's what differentiates a project from uh, an operation whereby like paying bills, uh, paying salaries, the um, normal office, uh, normal office work that is operations because it can continue as long as the office exists. But a project is something that you want to do for that particular objective, maybe to achieve a need, maybe to extend a new, a new, a new, a new roof, to to acquire a new building, to acquire a new, a new a new information system, something like that. That becomes a project because you will not be doing it every now and then. So that's what I'm saying. It is, it is supposed to be for that particular goal or objective. So what is a project and what are the project characteristics? One, clear goal. You need to have a clear goal uh, that you need to, that project to achieve. And it is very important that whatever goal that project uh, you have envisioned it to achieve is aligned with the organization that is sponsoring that project. It is aligned with the vision. What is the vision of the pro of the organization? What do you want to achieve as an organization? Then, if you can bring, if you are bringing in a new project, that project has to be in line with that vision. You find if it is a it is um it is a, an organization that that deals with gender mainstreaming the project will look gender. The project will look at activities that will ensure that gender mainstreaming has been achieved. Again, a project is unique in such that two projects, two projects in an, in an, organization, in an organization can never be the same. Otherwise, if two projects look alike, it's better you combine them to, to, to become a bigger, bigger project. A project is temporary, that's, that is time, down, time bound, and it has deadlines. Again, as anything else, a project consumes resources. And of course, this, this, these uh, resources are scarce. And that is why we need to do monitoring. That is why we need to do evaluation. And then a project involves several stakeholders. You have several people who will be interested in your project. There are people with competing interests. There are people who, who want that project to succeed. There are people who don't want that project. Those are called stakeholders. So the other aspect we, were to, we, we are going to look at today is on participation. Because we are looking at uh, participatory community development evaluation or participatory evaluation of community development projects. What is participation? Of course, the simplest way is to look at it as taking part in an activity jointly with others so that you can share your different experiences, your different challenges, your knowledge with one another. It is also listening, learning, asking questions, and showing respect for all persons involved. That is participation. And, and again, that is, uh, those are different levels of participation especially when it comes to involvement of stakeholders you can you can involve stakeholders by just informing them yeah you tell them hey guys we are doing a project on this no need no more no more no more no more input from them just informing them that is one level and it is the lowest level of participation there is another level called consult where you you just involve the stakeholders for asking their views. That is called um, consultants. Involving them is when pr probably you give them a task and you ask them to complete during the, the process of the project. And then collaborating, you try, to, you try to work with them, show them how they can, they can give some input, ask them questions. How, how do you think we can do it better? But the best model of participation of all is empower, where you give, where you desire to give the stakeholders or the people involved in your project the ability to do what 
the project once achieved. You involve them, you actually give them the if it's skills they needed, you give them. If it's tools, you give them the tools so that they can take part in delivering the goals of the project. And that is about empowerment. And that is what we are going to discuss today. Uh, participatory uh, project management, participatory project monitoring, participatory project evaluation needs to look at empowering your stakeholders. So evaluation, it is analysis of complete goals, completed goals, objectives, and activities to determine whether the project has achieved or produced desired re results, benefits, or change. In other words, when you do an evaluation for a project, it is like you are conducting a postmortem for that project. You want to see, have we succeeded? Have we failed? Where are we? So that is about evaluation. Evaluation should not be confused with monitoring and uh, the differences between the two is there. Uh, let, we can differentiate evaluation from monitoring by the frequency, by the activity or the main action, by the purpose, by the focus, by the information sources and who undertakes it. Monitoring, it's, regu it's, it's regular and periodic. Evaluation is episodic, meaning you can do it in midterm or end term. Like uh, we, we, we've just con concluded a race, in, there's a race which has that been, which is almost or has just been completed in US. And uh, that is like an end term evaluation for the four years. But in between, between now and uh, 2022, there will be midterm elections. That is, that is a midterm evaluation. So evaluation needs to be, it involves collecting data and all that. Uh, the main action, the main action for monitoring is keeping track or getting oversight of how the project is going. For evaluation, it's about an assessment. For basic purpose, why do we need it? For monitoring, it's about improving efficiency and adjusting the project's work plan. So for evaluation, you do the, you, it, it's one of the purposes to see whether you can adjust how your project is going. Um, evaluation on the other side, it's about effectiveness, improve. We want to see how effective was this project? How effective was our campaign? What impacts have we made? And then that can help you in, in uh, develop future programming or future programs, develop them better so that they can, they do not fail as, or they do not, um, they do not fall short like the previous project did. Focus, monitoring is so much on inputs, processes and outputs, like how much have we used today? How much have we produced to learn today? How many, how many, how many people have we trained today? How, how much do we spend? training those people today. That is the focus of evaluation, or of monitoring, sorry. Uh, 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 on the other hand, the focus for evaluation is effectiveness, how relevant that particular project is, what impact and how cost effective it was. Information sources, where do we get data for monitoring? For monitoring, information sources involve or uh, are routine systems, field observations, progress reports and rapid assessments. Uh, for evaluation, you do surveys and studies, exploratory studies. You can do, you can do a, you can do a baseline survey. You can do a midterm evaluation survey. And of course you'll find that it is a bit expensive to do evaluation as opposed to conducting um, monitoring in, in terms of the information information required. So who undertakes evaluation and who undertakes monitoring? Evaluation, uh, um, sorry, monitoring is undertaken by project managers, the people who are working in the project, community workers, beneficiaries, 
supervisors and financiers or funders. Evolution, on the other hand, is taken by a higher level. Uh, program managers, supervisors, funders, external evaluators, and community beneficiaries. On the external evaluators aspect is when an organization contracts an external firm and uh, call for consultancy, where you give them the terms of reference and you ask them to do consultancy for you, to do the evaluation for you. This is where we get the external evaluators coming in. I will be looking at that at external evaluators in a, in another slide where I slightly see where the external evaluation falls short and why we need to do the participatory evaluation. Participatory evaluation of community development projects. Participatory evaluation of community development pro projects. The evaluation or uh, evaluation coordinator, the person who appoint, who you appoint as your organization to do the evaluation for you, uh, involves, should involve project stakeholders in all phases of project evaluation. And what are these phases of project evaluation? One, definition of evaluation objectives. That is one phase of uh, evaluation. You define the evaluation project uh, objectives. What do we want to achieve at the end of this? evaluation. You develop the evaluation methodology. What methodology are we going to use to collect the data, to analyze? Again, another phase, collect and interpret data. In the, in the collection and interpretation of data, that is the third phase. And then the, fi the final phase, making conclusions and recommendations. All these phases, stakeholders need to be involved in the evaluation and for it to become participatory. Participatory community development. Stakeholders in community development projects, who are these? Who are the stakeholders that you need to involve in your evaluation? One, beneficiaries. Two, these beneficiaries. Three, government. Four, CSOs and any other you can think about right now. But who are these, these beneficiaries? You find that a project has people who will benefit from it. And again, some people will not benefit. In fact, they will lose from that project. So these are called the these beneficiaries. These are the people who are so powerful who start fighting your project from the word go. If they know they are going to lose in that project, they are the people who, who will start fighting your project. But the participatory evaluation says you need to, have, to involve everyone. Again, uh, on, uh, on request in the, in, the, in the report I'm talking about, I've done uh, justice to this topic and discussed the issue of power, uh, stakeholder power influence mat uh, uh, matrix, which again can be gotten from that report upon request uh, on how you need to engage different people with different powers, with different interests on uh, uh, in project management and most importantly in the evaluation of community development projects. Again, government is a permanent stakeholder, you know that. In, it is usually interested in all the all the activities under its jurisdiction. Of course, by 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 virtue of it being interested in taxes, uh, in service delivery, and all that. So those are your stakeholders. Faces in participatory stakeholder. Evaluation, the first phase, again, as I said there, the other one was phases for evaluation in general, but this is a phase for participatory stakeholder driven evaluation or participatory, or participatory evaluation, be it in community development projects or uh, in any other type of projects. The first phase, one, it's about pre preparing or planning, pre-planning meetings for the evaluation, where you need to define the goals, you, identify, you need to identify the people you'll be working with, look at the logistics, 
uh, you do you do uh, you do a visual framework of the project. Those who are good in uh, design, you can do a design. You can do you can do charts. You can do maps to show who will be involved, who is where in that project, who is going to lose something like that. Then you do uh, you do an evaluation planning workshop with your with your facilitators. Phase two about planning again. You organize your stakeholders into a working group, of course, based on their interests. You define now evaluation questions with them. Identify data collection sources and techniques. Develop data collection instruments. Are they questionnaires? Are they focus group questions? Those, those instruments. Then finalize a sample of data collection sites and interviewees. First three, once you have done the groundwork, you now do, you prepare fieldwork teams, you conduct interviews and observations, analyze information collected, summarize fieldwork findings. What did we find from the field? That is about summarizing fieldwork findings. Um, the, other, uh, the other step from there, uh, that is phase four. Uh, it's about formulating lessons learned because, of course, once you do something, there is always there is always a learning. Every every activity is a learning process. So you want to summarize the lessons you have learned from from the from the data collection uh, exercise, and then you develop an action plan based on the evaluation findings. You can recommend. Then that then um, there's a after that there's report writing and distributing and discussing results finding with them again the stakeholders but you find in most cases when we do an external an external evaluator they just come to the feed collect views and go and then they go come with reports of course in most cases they bring reports that that will look that will look good in the eyes of the in the eyes of the in the eyes of the of the of the project sponsor of course it said who, who pays the who pays the piper calls the tune so that is the case with uh, external evaluators whereby they may bring results that are too skewed again i'll be looking at that in another slide when i'll be discussing on the merits and demerits of participatory versus the versus the the conventional evaluation there is the slide why why do we need why do we need evaluation again conventional they usually look at accountability and again it gives usually a summary judgment about the project to determine if the funding will continue. That's what I say. Convention is all about, are we going to get more funding for this project? But for participatory, it's about how, how, how have we empowered the local people? How have we empowered the community to initiate, control, and take corrective action as far as the project is concerned? So that's a major difference. Who, who does that? In conventional, uh, monitoring, uh, in, uh, sorry, in conventional evaluation, it's usually external evaluators. In the participatory, it's community members. It's the project staff. It's the facilitator. It's the project doing the evaluation and the community members, beneficiaries, these beneficiaries, all those stakeholders put together. What? Uh, very interesting there. In conventional mon uh, evaluation, we have predetermined indicators of success. The project, the project, uh, the project evaluator has already said these are the indicators that we're going to use in this project. Again, in most cases, usually cost and the output in the project. How many? How many? How many people? How much? You know how many how many members have we reached so far? That's about output. How much? At what cost? How many fields did we make? 
but in the in the participatory it's about people identifying their own indicators of success it's not about how many people we trained it's about how what did people get from that training how many people can remember two or three points from that training that is about participatory evaluation that that brings the difference it's not about how many latrines we have built in a particular in a particular village it's about how many people are going to that latrine it's about how many cases or incidences of um, waterborne diseases we have managed to prevent there is a story in community development i think it's in kenya i don't know whether you've had it in your place where where donors came and they thought that uh, this community was going long distances to look for water so they decided these people need a borehole. They built boreholes nearby. One month, two months, three months, people still going to fetch water in that stream. Then somebody comes and asks, this project was built to ensure that you don't go long distances to fetch water. What happened? It happens that the community had their own perceptions of that of that stream there is they they have a spiritual connection with the stream so is, uh, instead of first coming up to the community and asking them what what their values as community are what uh, how do they perceive that long distances and all that you people just assumed the problem was water no water in nearby probably they had their own perceptions uh, another version of the story says that uh, people preferred going to those distances so that they can meet with people from that other side so those are things which the project had not addressed so for a project to be successful it need to have community members or the or the beneficiaries the stakeholders the dis beneficiaries on board and that is why um talking about participatory evaluation today then another aspect how on conventional conventional they focus on scientific objectivity distancing of evaluators from other participants they usually have complex procedures and delayed limited access to results you find that uh, the project is designated uh, sometimes you find that the project is designated confidential and it is taken to the to the chief boss in the organization for for his uh, and of course most of these those pro reports waste their collect dust in the shelves that is about conventional about participatory it's about self evaluation we use very simple methods adapted to the local culture we have open immediate sharing of results through local involvement in evaluation process for participatory it's immediate we have looked at it. it it is beneficial to us this is how much we have benefited and all that uh in the mid uh, again when when do we do this when do we do this when do we do participatory when do we do conventional participatory uh conventional is done mid-term as i said every maybe if a project is four years every two years we do you do an evaluation then the end of the term evaluation you look at look at uh, when you look at the call for pro, call for proposals or consultants you'll find end term evaluation uh consultant being invited to do end term evaluation uh, or again you can find a consultant being asked to do a mid term evaluation so those are those are the timelines for conventional evaluation for the participator it is any assessment for the project involved it is usually it's usually a convergence of monitoring and evaluation the two phases are usually merged in the conventional no monitoring is alone it is a process on its own but in the participatory it is it is part it is part and parcel of the entire process monitoring and evaluation are combined and they are taking uh, they are taking 
they are taking uh, they are taking is it taking process yeah they are taking process throughout as long as the project is alive so that is the differences between the two why do we need or what are the reasons for participatory evaluation a lot of money is invested in community development projects by donors and governments again you find that most community development projects are not sustainable a number of actors in community development who are not coordinated. You'll find somebody doing this, another person doing this, another person doing that. Of which if you did a participatory evaluation in your project, you should have identified all the people who have interest in that project. And by virtue of you inviting them in your meetings, they will also know that they need you in their project. So in the long run, you find there's a big network of community development uh, not practitioners, are they practitioners? They commit development uh, actors who are coordinated as stakeholders. Again, stakeholders and beneficiaries not well involved in projects. That is, that is why we need participatory. In conventional, we don't involve stakeholders. We don't involve beneficiaries a lot. We, in fact, we usually, we usually, in fact, for, for conventional, uh, those people are usually pre, it's like, they are usually prepared on what to do. They are asked, you know, tomorrow we are we'll be having a meeting. Uh, you pick the best who you think will give you the answers you want. And those are the people you invite, you'll give them questionnaires. You can even guide them on what to write. And that is, and that is uh, you call that evaluation. No, in evaluation, you let people express their views. And that is, uh, that is the importance of participatory evaluation. Again, most projects you find they are, they are supply driven rather than demand driven because I know your problem. Like the case I talked about uh, of, um, of balls, it's supply because they don't have money for building, for, building uh, for constructing a borehole. He didn't. He didn't, he didn't go to the demand side. Did the community need the, the borehole? Or if the community in the long run would need the borehole, were they prepared to use the borehole? So that is, that is the essence of involvement whereby we avoid supply-driven projects and go for demand-driven projects. Participatory evaluation challenges. Of course, there will be challenges. Resources, of course, having all those meetings. Time factor, how many meetings do you need? Skills and knowledge. Community members may not have skills and knowledge required in evaluating the project, but again, it's up to you to build those skills. Power play, very important. There are people who say, ah, no, I can't call that in my project. I can't call that person. Why? Probably he holds a position like yours in another place or probably that person holds a stake. That is, you know, the reason they are called stakeholders, they hold a stake. So probably that person holds a stake elsewhere and uh, he, has, he has never involved you. Or if you involve him, you fear that he may, he may jeopardize the success of your project. So that is one of the reasons, power play. You can add other reasons uh, with the, uh, with time, participatory evaluation significance. Why do we need this? Again, it's, it's for accountability, it's for objectivity, it's for ownership of the project and results. In the long run, do we say that this, that toilet was built by a donor or do we say that project belongs to the community? If the community was involved in the whole process, again, they will be able to own that project. You find some schools where classrooms were built, but no students go there. Students, uh, the parents prefer taking their kids to other schools in the, in the neighborhood. Reasons, they were not involved. Probably they could have combined those resources and expanded that other school instead of building small, small schools which people had no interest in. Again, 
significance, complete picture of the project is evaluated. Remember we say that participatory evaluation is a convergence of monitoring and evaluation. So the, we usually get to see the complete picture. No bias due to external evaluators. You know, external evaluators is there to keep his job because he hasn't paid. And of course, he will have to, he'll give, he'll produce skilled results so that uh, probably he can get another contract. But in this instance, it is us, the community members. It is us, the project team members. It is us, the beneficiaries who are evaluating the project. So it is ours. There will not be there will be no bias. We will we'll have a big complete picture. Again, another importance: capacity building of the community. Because the moment you involve someone in data collection, he has learned how to use a, probably an iPad or probably a tablet. He has learned how to fill a questionnaire. So that is about capacity building. You, you Once you do participatory evaluation, the, the skills are impacted in, in community members and they are able to do evaluation. They are able to collect the data. They are able to evaluate data on their own. Participatory evaluation of community development projects ends there. Unless there's a question or input, observation. Thank you, Joshua. Can we give him a loud of uh, applause? Thank you, thank you for taking us uh, through the discussion, that presentation in the last uh, 30 minutes. We found it quite interesting, informative and uh, refreshing. It's always uh, interesting talking about what we can do with communities and how we can also learn as we work with communities. And you can use the chat to to raise any questions or to make any comments and to also to seek clarifications. In community development, we are all students, we are all learners. So we don't want to assume that uh, Yoshua has all the answers, but uh, we can learn with him. We can share and uh, build our pool of knowledge collectively. Joshua is just a leader for today, but a leader amongst equals. Thank you very much. Any questions, interventions, they are welcome. Those who have joined us, please uh, feel free. As the uh, participants uh, reflect on what they might possibly want to raise, Joshua, there is. Uh, um, Roger raised a question in the a chat question. here. So he said, who in your opinion should commence the participatory process? And Roger, I'm just gonna unmute you too. Oh, okay, okay, thank you, Meredith. Okay. Joshua, you have been able to pick that one. Uh, question from? So the question was from Roger in the chat okay. and he said, who in your opinion should commence the participatory process? Who, in my opinion, should commence mm -hmm. the Who participatory? Opinion, should commence the participatory process. That's a question from Roger Green of uh, Goldsmiths College, University, University of London. Do I answer it right away or you take another questions? Uh, possibly, I would, I would suggest, uh, let, let's pose the questions and uh, Joshua can yeah, respond. True, 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 true. Let, let them, uh, I've taken note of that. Okay. And I think there's no other question. There is one more coming and uh, I believe people are also <laughs> typing. Okay, sir. 
how do you address imbalance? Imbalance in power relations. Maybe mine is not a question, but maybe something to reflect on. But it depends on how you look at it. It might also be a question. So that as we talk about the community project and the aspect of variation coming in, different things are changing in our communities. For instance, if we talk about the current situation, it's now like almost a year, whereby we are having different challenges affecting our communities. And we still don't have like a clear way, way out of this situation. So now when you talk about this community project, because currently, yes, we are in this pandemic, but we are still doing community projects. How basically are these changing seasons or different pandemics coming in? Are they affecting the different community projects? So that as we talk about beneficiaries, how do we take care of these beneficiaries? So that some of these beneficiaries, we are going to, we are going to involve maybe the key people in the communities. Whereby these key people maybe if somebody can be able to mobilize. So assuming this person is able to bring the community together as part of the beneficiaries is maybe due to bad luck, maybe the person due, during this pandemic, what happens to this community project? So that even as we talk about involving this community, the communities at different levels. So when there's a change, either change of season or a pandemic comes in, how do these communities and the projects keep on? So that even as we plan, are we able now to factor in those different changes and how they affect these communities? So that as then when we do the evaluation or either final or midterm, how can we factor in all those different changes? So it might be a question, it might be something to reflect on, it depends on how you look at it. Okay, thank you. Possibly Joshua, you can address those uh, comments and then uh, we can come back. Uh, the first question came from, um, uh, okay, it, it's about who should commence the participatory process. Uh, as you've said, evaluation, it's part of the project management life cycle. Probably I didn't, I didn't, I didn't capture that, but uh, pre previously there used to be a framework for, for project management developed by PM Bok. No, is, is, is it a PM Bok and then developed by uh, APM or something like that, uh, Association of Project Managers. But the, there's a big book, Project Management Body of Knowledge, which lists at least uh, 12 knowledge areas and uh, five processes, five process groups, totally up to around 40, 40 something, 42 to 45 processes. And one of the key processes was stakeholder management, not process, one of the key knowledge area is stakeholder management, which was added uh, recently. And then one of, the, one of the processes is monitoring and evaluation. What does that mean? It means that the moment an organization impacts on a project, it has to appoint someone called project manager. That particular project manager is the liaison between the organization or the sponsoring organization and the, and the outside world, be it the suppliers, be it the, the, the clients, be it the beneficiaries, the stakeholders. So it is up to the project manager once you are doing your, the first thing when you're doing your stakeholder mapping, all that, it is the project manager who should be tasked with this process. So on the issue of who, it's the project manager. I think that is what I've said for who should commence the, the, the participatory process. It's the project manager for me. Then um, the issue of power plays in the stakeholder, the stakeholder power, the stakeholder power and influence grid. Again, that can be gotten from that uh, report if I share. 
there is always a yes sorry okay in the there's always there's always a there's always a, a level eh, of of power there's a stakeholder who has more power who will but has no interest in your project there's a stakeholder who has in high interest has no power in your project so there's a way you need to look at how you balance those how you balance those uh, those uh, stakeholders. You can look at a stakeholder, a particular stakeholder. He has a lot of interest in your project. He's calling you every now and then, but probably look at him. He can do much. So you need to know, again, the best, another best thing is to divide these stakeholders along interest groups. Those who are interested in, uh, in your project because they will lose probably a, a particular resource like land. You don't come, don't call them in a joint meeting the first first meeting with first people who are going to gain from the project because they will look at the, there'll be an anti-vasario relationship so you need you need to you, you need to have your own judgment see who has this what interest divide them into interest groups you can even be meeting them differently so that you don't bring everyone on board and then in the long run you 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 end up having chaos i think that is uh, about the issue of balancing power and uh, relations in stakeholder have them in divided into interest groups in hostile communities for example during war or whatever conflict what is the best participatory approach again in community development there is always there is always uh, one of the principles do no harm do no harm You should not uh, bring your people together in a place where they will be at risk. You should not put yourself at risk. So in that process, if, and of course, in most cases, you'll find those people are people who are very, who are not techno savvy. You can't say they will bring them, uh, you'll be sending them online questionnaires. They'll, they don't have internet in the first place. Like for me, uh, sometimes there's a, there's a time I had to, to, to switch my place of work to another place so that I can get internet. So there are things which don't work in, in, in some places. So, and I, so for those, uh, those areas, I think, again, you don't uh, do a project where you will jeopardize your safety or the safety of your community. Uh, but again, in, in, the, in, that, in, in that context, the security team will be best to, to guide. I will stand guided by members on that. That is that is how far I can answer. What kinds of issues or barriers do you have you encountered? What kind of issues or barriers have we encountered to community engagement? Mostly the issues that you find in community, especially in areas like where we work. It's about uh, literacy. It's about uh, disinterest. Uh, and again, it's a most uh, and uh, most in most issues you find that people have their own they 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 place their own interests first. What is that again? The, the issue of stakeholders. How big is my stake in, in the whole project? So I think that is where now you need to 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 sharpen your skills, negotiation skills, so that somebody doesn't go with a bigger stake. Than, than another in a, in a particular project. Because in the long run, in the long run, we are here to, to serve as custodians of the resources that we have been endowed with. That is for about, um, that is for about, about challenges. Similar question to Dr. Moe, I find that it is, um, it, I'm, in, I'm an American, Kenyans tend to tell me what they think I want to hear instead of the truth. Sure, no, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so how can we evaluate projects when there's this power imbalance? Should there be a third party doing evaluations? Third party, again, the third party is what I was talking about that we need to, we need to minimize the third party. But again, if you find your people are more truthful with a particular person, use that person. 
and but let, let him be part of your project so that is not also going to please you mm true so uh, again uh, mr nick is is it madam nikki madam madam nikki yes yes this is this is you yes that's me <laughs> Uh, tend to tell you what they think it, you, you you are interested in yes yeah but uh, i think uh, you need to learn the system you need to learn the system get of course there is always a truthful person there if it's someone you want to use you can use him you can you can have a deputy project manager or something who is uh, of their of their of their of their of their of, of their type you can go ask questions have discussions with them you know the you know the problem with us is when you give somebody a questionnaire like right now i feel even if no, nobody wants to look stupid and i was telling someone i, I wouldn't i wouldn't answer his questionnaire because he, he had made it look like an exam nobody wants to look stupid everyone will will juggle his head until he comes with the best answer ever but once it is a discussion like this uh in the long run there will be some element of truth so i'll encourage open discussions quite often in most cases have them in the most informal setup because those are the times the true the true character comes in so that is for for nikki yes thank you <laughs> yes i could just add uh, for nikki well time also tries to sort out these things because of a time people now people get used to you and exactly come to understand what you are capable of what you are not capable of and then of, of course expectations are mediated and ultimately now some normal way of relating comes comes into place when ultimately you are what what you what you present what you represent in the community then becomes apparent to the community and then now you can start relating on a real more realistic level of um, of operation because then they know what you can't give what you can't say what you can't do and then you you have a normal process of relating because most of the, the most of these these uh, stereotyped expectations and questions or answers are based on the, the the fact that people may not really know exactly who you are and what you what you present what you represent in the community but ultimately once time has passed and then people have now a better evaluation of you then they'll be able to tell you the truth and that's what a participatory <laughs> processes enable us it is not a, you jump in and you jump out once you come in and then of course you're in a hurry and of course people expect you're also going to be out so fast then they'll give you what they think is good for you and then you are gone but if they realize you are there for the long haul then they, they, you become part of the process and then you're also able to evaluate the reality on the ground in terms of what is real and what is cosmetic or what is stage managed for you okay joshua you may proceed peter and, diane uh, now that i'm also talking the maybe you can also take advantage of the break for purposes of a uh, recording we might want to ask a uh, to take a photograph so that you can also use it on the website ISED website for purposes of ethics uh, in the event you are not interested in appearing in the in the photograph would ask you to shut down your video it's, a, it's an ethical imperative so that uh, we get your content to appear in the photograph and you'll be part of the dissemination that takes place from ISED yeah, Mudoni, thank you for removing your mask. I hope it is safe to do so. <laughs> <laughs> is everybody ready for the picture to be taken? Mudoni, you're you're ready. You, you, you okay, I'll give you a three, two, one. Us. Ready? Okay, yeah. three, two, one. Okay, that's it. Okay, thank you very much, and uh, you're welcome. From my SED, Sub-Saharan Africa, we are grateful to host you and to that, that you're able to be part of this uh, discussion. This is the fifth in the series. And we are going to have the, the next one in um, December 9th, every second Wednesday of the month, we, we have uh, this uh, collapse for the Sub-Saharan African region members. And uh, from, this, from this series, 
we are open to all members of IACD, not just in the region, all members of IACD. And thanks so much, Meredith, for the invitation. You can see we are, we are quite a from across the globe. Thank you very much. We'll be communicating the topic for for the next for the next uh, series, the, the sixth edition of the the webinar in in due course. So Joshua, continue. Yes, Peter Diane, I'm seeing he has introduced uh, an interesting topic. Uh, in my other life, it's called uh, recursive relationship. Those those in maths and uh, computing is asking um, how do you measure effectiveness of participatory evaluation, which is like, uh, how do you evaluate evaluation according to the way that question comes? So this is an interesting, and I would like, uh, I would like uh, to, again, in the report I, I've, I've talked about, there's a, there's a book on monitoring and evaluation for, by CRS. CRS a joint book by CRS, Catholic Relief Services and uh, American Red Cross. I can't quite remember the, the author, but it has it, it had hinted at something like that. So probably you can look at it. Uh, but in most cases, uh, in a particular places, in a particular project, when effective evaluation, it's participatory, it's all that, the results will, will just come up. People will be happy. You know, we start measuring success in other more abstract levels eh? other than uh, simple numbers you know when it when we, we start talking about numbers it becomes scientific, too much scientific but in community development we have it's, it's about qualitative it's about the qualitative nature of uh, community so i think for diane you can you can try to see something to do with monitoring and evaluation American Red Cross and Stroke Catholic Relief Services. I'm sorry, I've forgotten the other. But again, if you get that report, which I'm talking about, maybe I can share with the doctor. Uh, it has made uh, it has made a statement to to that effect. Uh, somebody wants to. Somebody wanted to leave. I think I'm done for the questions. Roger Green, you can go with your question. All right, thanks, Daniel. Joshua, hi there. Uh, really interesting presentation, many thanks. Uh, just a question, I mean, it just follows on from my first question is, and it's the thing about um, who initiates this participatory process, because uh, you could argue that um, it's always the individuals, organizations with the power who have the ideas who commence the process rather than it being a sort of co-produced uh, way forward. And I think often, and I think some of the questions and some of your answers quite rightly, that if, you, if you're undertaking community development and you are an outsider, which is often the case when you work with communities, well then to, to initiate a participatory process means that presumably you have to be accepted up to a point by that community or and groups so i think it's a real challenge because i think often the participatory process really is a sort of a guise for a top-down approach and i think that's very challenging trying to uh uh produce a co you know, a co-production process uh, which again is often top down so it's a real challenge and i think uh you're your way forward, Joshua, in terms of negotiating that that uh, challenge, I think was um, good. Thank you. So it's not a question, really. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you very much for the intervention. Well, generally, of course, from what uh, following from what Roger Green is saying, the by design as the project is be, be, being designed. There's an imperative also to, to determine how evaluation will be done. And so the project leaders to a large extent will determine how the project will be evaluated. And in the event it is participatory, of course, they will also design how the process will unfold. And the, of course, the leadership process will come through. The question is, can we have absolute participatory evaluation process where we can have then the, power, the, the powers of the project leaders 
or the powerful within the community neutralized. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the norm would be to reduce that, that difference and that control, that power of the more powerful as much as possible so that then we can have the least, the less powerful also have their say and have their voice in determining and owning the process and driving the process. Because ultimately we need to also to, to understand that community development also requires some leadership and the leadership within the community processes, within community development processes, of course, is going to be for those who have more say than others, in some cases also have more stakes than others, but then we need to intermediate so that then we don't lose the voice of everybody in the process. And while also ensuring that there is also leadership within the project process. So that again is not an open-ended process. And then there's accountability across the board from the powerful to the least powerful in the, in the community. From those, again, who are, who, are at most in, who are most in need in the community, they also have to also have their stake and their voice also count. So that then to a large extent there is, we draw some reasonable balance within the participatory process. And of course, ultimately have a process where the project also then comes to a close in a manner that is acceptable to the project leaders, to the project financiers, and also to the community members themselves, and also to the group that uh, Joshua has brought in bo on board. Those who have no interest, uh, who are even likely to sabotage the project, we also placate their interest so that they can also open some space for us to operate and get their pro our projects uh, benefiting the communities for whom these projects are being started. Any further questions, comments? Dr. Moya, maybe I can give a comment. Yeah, please go on it. I think something that's coming out very clearly is that uh, stakeholder analysis, stakeholder mapping is a very, very key uh, and uh, important process when we're doing uh, projects at the community level at whatever level. I think it's one very important thing because I think most of these things we can address uh, and we can bring in participation if we are able to do a proper stakeholder analysis during the design of the program or the project here. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Modoni. And you, you recall that that's what uh, Joshua had started on by determining the stakeholders so that then you know exactly how to placate each uh, stakeholder and also how to use whatever stake they bring on board into the project. Any questions, any comments, observations? There was the question on those people who are not beneficiaries, how do you basically deal with them? Because as we talk about these beneficiaries, they are those people who are going to lose. So that if your interests are not taken care of within that project, basically you are not benefiting much as you expected from that project. So how do we deal with that group of people? So that if you find like maybe even a quarter of the community or the people you want to deal with are not going to benefit, maybe the way they feel or the project may not be able to meet their needs, how do you include them in the whole process so that even as by the time the project is coming to an end, they can feel comfortable to be part of it and maybe share the results. Maybe that one was not taken care of. Maybe somebody can respond to it. That's a nice, that's a nice question. Anybody can uh, respond? We don't want to assume a monopoly of knowledge by <laughs> Joshua. That would be an community development. Okay, maybe just a comment again when it comes to when we're doing the stakeholder analysis, we normally do like the uh, in terms of um, influence. Uh, uh, how is this stakeholder influencing the project? So I think also when we are doing the analysis, we can identify all the stakeholders and their role in, in the project. And that way we are able to identify who um, who is going to benefit and who is not benefiting and how do we address those issues i may not have a comprehensive response to seller's question but i think it's something that we can also address when we are doing the stakeholder analysis 
Okay, thank you. Thank you, Madonia. The issue that is coming through is that we are people who are not going to benefit from the project, largely because the project is that doesn't even need or they don't have a need that is going to be addressed by the specific project. The whole process of managing the, 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 the participatory processes entails an open, open forums for discussions. And when all these things are made clear, then it becomes very clear who is benefiting, who is not benefiting, how the project is affecting them or not affecting all the individuals. And therefore everybody is clear in terms of then how the project plays out within the community setting. And once then there is a open sharing of information, then it becomes very easy to manage the expectations for the different groups, the beneficiaries and the non-beneficiaries of the projects. And therefore those who have no stake all who are not likely to benefit from the project or may not be affected adversely by the project, then they already know their position and then becomes very easy then for all these individual, all the parties to coexist within the community environment or within the project ecosystem. Each knowing what, where, they, where they are placed as the project plays out generally. So any final comment, observation? Let's put that uh, before. Okay, Joshua is uh, giving us a take home. Where he says that is noted that there is limited reference to indicators of community development. Can this forum be the first to develop such a guide, social impact assessment guidelines? Joshua is inviting us to, con to constitute ourselves into a working party to develop this. Any comment and observations? Okay, on the social impact assessment, we are working on a social risk management framework uh, that is going to be addressing uh, the social risks that uh, come up from uh, human and infrastructural development. And one of the guidelines we'll be developing is a social impact assessment uh, because we will be required to do a social impact assessment for all the development projects across the country so maybe joshua you can look out for that and we can also share here once we have it uh, ready okay thank you so Mudon, then you can undertake to share with us in uh once once it's available in one of the one of our series or editions of this uh, of this forum and, uh, is that okay Mudoni? yes that's okay, thank, you. thank you very much. Uh, possibly also from ISED, there is a team that is working on uh, evaluation frameworks. And uh, once again, some documentation is out, we, will, we should be able to share from, from ISED, but there's a team that is coming together to, to work in this particular area. And I believe this is an area that possibly will also, they, they, they are going to, to take up in terms of developing indicators. Because as you talk about evaluation frameworks, indicators also become important, a part of the framework. So we'll also be sharing from ISED once that work is, uh, is, 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 is at a stage where it can be shared. And so I think there is convergence in terms of an area of interest that needs to be focused, focused on. So maybe we'll share with the team, with Meredith, we can take it up. We can share with the team that is working out that there is interest actually in what they are coming up with. Thank you very much. So then I think we, from my end, let me express my appreciation from the ISED Sub-Saharan Africa region that uh, we, we continue to be supported being on the fifth edition of a series. I think that's evaluation of evaluation of success. <laughs> The congratulations to the ISED Sub-Saharan Africa Region membership. 
And for the rest of ISCD membership who have joined us, we feel supported and um, we'll continue to do this. It was one of the issues that came up that uh, we need to be to have some ways of building our capacities. And this is one of the ways of doing it and making ISCD relevant in our everyday operations so that we just don't say we are members because you have a beautiful certificate for Meredith, but we benefit in ways that support what you do as professionals, as practitioners, and as partners with the communities that we work with. So thank you very much. And uh, Meredith, any final